Hello, this is Mary, and welcome to You Can Make a Website with the new Google Sites. Now, as you see um, on my first slide here, I have uh, myself, Mary Kovach from Erie One Bosey's Winnerick. And you'll see um, my first identification, Google Certified Trainer. The second one I have today is a little horse, um, because as you can hear uh, today, my voice is uh, a little horse. Uh, it's a joke I used to use as a librarian with my little kids. Um, so for this webinar, I'll actually uh, be using some recordings. So I'm going to do the intro for this part here, and then I have some tutorial videos that I've uh, created uh, in the past, in the recent past, for the new Google Sites. And those are centered around um, social studies, but really they can um, be used for any number of classrooms, um, clubs, for student projects. Um, so we'll take a look at the many uses of Google Sites in uh, this webinar. So the things we'll be doing, uh, looking at Google Sites, uh, the new version of Google Sites, uh, the features and benefits of using this, and looking at uh, some comparison between uh, the classic Google Sites, which uh, was in place until um, about two years ago, and uh, the new Google Sites, which became available to everybody recently. So we'll look at some example Google Sites of some of the features you can use, and then the tutorial videos that I'll add to this will be to help you set up your own Google Site, so walking through uh, those steps. So prerequisites um, for this session. So you will need to have uh, a, a Gmail account either of your own or if your school is part of Google for Education or what's now called G Suite for Education, then you will already have um, Google Access. And Sites is one of the core apps for uh, the G Suite. So with this, by default, you should have Google Sites. Sometimes, though, it's up to the discretion of your district domain to give you access or not give access to either students or teachers. So that's something you'll want to check too to make sure that if you want to use this uh, through your school domain that they haven't disabled that access um, either for students or teachers. Um, and so again this is an, is an introductory session and it will go over starting from scratch uh, some of the basics of the new Google Sites which really is designed for those who may not have website design skills or HTML skills, making it easy for regular Google users to take what they may already have in their Google Drive and to bring that uh, into a website very quickly and easily and to share that quickly and easily, either with uh, the general public, either with just those within your district, or just as something that you keep private for yourself until you're ready to share that. <clears throat> so Google Sites is um, a free and easy web design program. So some uses of that, you can certainly create um, teacher websites through that. Um, some teachers I've worked with recently have used it to create, let's say, uh, exam review. So a separate web area where they can have multiple sections for materials for exam review or having a Google Sites for a particular project. But it's also great um, for those who may have uh, clubs or sports, uh, other organizations uh, within a school district to easily put together a website that they can share um, just with um, those within their school or to the public in general. And also, if students do have access um, in your school, it can be used um, for students to create uh, projects or portfolios. So again, if students have been working in Google Drive um, through Google Classroom or otherwise, they can easily take materials that are in their drive and drag and drop them into a Google site. Because that's mainly how Google sites are developed. It's your dragging and dropping your existing materials uh, into the site. So um, Google Sites is completely web-based. You can access it from any device with internet access. 
So even from a tablet or smartphone, if you had to, although I really do prefer uh, to work on a laptop or desktop to edit, but certainly you could do that on a mobile device as well. It's easy, but it's powerful, especially for those who are uh, using Google resources already. Um, now, there are some additional um, features that you have in the classic sites. So if you're somebody who does HTML code, who wants to be able to fine tune things that way, then um, there's still the classic sites available. So eventually those will be migrated over um, at a point where the new Google Sites has some of those features added back in. So if you wanted something more advanced, there is that option for you as well. Okay, so as I mentioned, kind of the nice thing about Google Sites is you have Google integration. So you can easily drag and drop to insert um, documents that you've created, um, forms, Google Slides presentations, spreadsheets. Um, you can easily either bring in images that you already have saved or you can easily bring in images that you search for right through Google Sites using uh, the built-in Google search. And you can also embed um, YouTube videos, other kinds of uh, videos, Google Maps you can embed. So if it's uh, an event where you need to have directions for somebody, that can be embedded right in the page as well. And you can have as many sites as you wish. So again, if you wanted to create a separate site for each classroom or each project, if you're using it that way, that's certainly an option that you have as well. So you have the option, as I mentioned, to keep your site private or to make that public. Or you can choose who um, is allowed to see the site. So if you're in uh, your Google domain, um, you can have the option to just share it with those in your school domain as well. So the nice thing about um, Google Sites, as with any other Google resource, is that um, you can share um, either just um, viewing rights, obviously, as we talked about, or you can share editing rights. So if you want others to be able to edit your site, you can give them access in much the same way that you would for a Google Doc, so they can help edit and add to that site. So just some comparison between uh, the classic version of Google Sites and the new version. So currently, the new sites does not have all of the features of the classic sites. So as I mentioned, if you're someone who wants to go into the code and fine-tune things, they don't have that option yet. That is in the classic sites, which is still available. Um, so more features will continue to be added. And um, I did have uh, some comparison links here that you can take a look at. Um, so these sites in particular um, will show you um, some of the features that are available in one uh, versus the other. And I also have uh, some examples here of uh, new Google Sites. Um, so this is actually one that I highlight uh, and I put together in um, the uh, tutorial videos that you'll watch shortly. And then also an example of a classic site um, that I also created for this um, social studies course um, for a particular district for the Lancaster Central School District. Um, so initially I just given access to Lancaster, but this is an example of how you can kind of see kind of the look and feel of how the uh, classic Google Sites look versus uh, the new Google Sites. So these slides will be available within uh, the course module that you can take a look at. So as I mentioned, um, they've added features into the new sites with the hopes that eventually everything will be into a sort of new Google Sites version. So migration tools um, will be released um, at some point, either by the end of this year or um, by next year, um, to migrate your, if you do have classic Google Sites, to change those into the new Google Sites tools. Um, so during this time frame, uh, both versions will be available. 
Um, so as you go into Google Sites, you will see a button in the lower left that will say to either turn to the new sites or the classic. So at this point, you can um, sort of go back and forth with that. And um, an example of that will be in the tutorial videos um, as part of this webinar. Okay, so these um, instructions will be uh, released next year in 2018. And then um, with a, a year in advance uh, of when they will actually cut off the classic sites, um, they will give users a year before they actually do that. Um, so in here, I do have some uh, sample Google sites um, for you to look at. So some teacher sample sites and also um, some others that will uh, give you an idea of what you can do within the new Google Sites. And we will take a look at those uh, in a follow-up video as well. So uh, before I end this portion, I need to give um, credit where credit is due. So a lot of the ideas from this, and actually ideas from uh, webinars that I've conducted in the past, and which I will in the future, have come from a Google um, innovator named um, Eric Kurtz. So um, he came in to visit us uh, last year. Um, he has some great resources on his website, which is on here, controlaltachieve.com. And if you go to that address slash new sites, um, you can see uh, his webinar that he did um, on that as well. And he has uh, some resources and a blog for a variety of Google tools. So I just wanted to uh, make you aware of that as well. And I hope to see you in the uh, next part of the webinar. Thank you. So in this portion um, of the webinar video, we will take a look at some of those examples uh, that I mentioned. Um, so the first one is the example of uh, the new site that I had created as uh, sort of a sample. And these are uh, the ones that I will walk through uh, the steps that I will walk through in the following videos. So you can see in here, I put in um, a custom banner. And uh, when you bring uh, text in, you can either have it just horizontally, or you can have several columns, uh, blocks of text that you bring in. So essentially, anything on this page is a block. So you bring in a block of text. You can see that I brought in a YouTube video. So the, the idea of this video was to um, create um, a community Olympics based on students uh, studying the Greek Olympics. So you can see in here, uh, one of the blocks I embedded a uh, YouTube video, which you can easily either search for or bring in the URL to embed. I embedded a Google Slides that I have here. And for any of these resources, um, if they wanted to see, if users wanted to see this larger on the screen, they could click on this button in the upper right corner, the little arrow going up. And then uh, they could see that full screen and then go through the slides full screen that way. Um, same thing with this. Um, it's an activity where I put together an infographic. So again, this was something that was in Google Drawings that I built based on uh, a survey and form, which we'll look at in a later webinar, actually, throughout this school year. And then you can see that in here, I've also embedded a Google form. So you could just copy and paste in a link, but you also have the option to click and drag in a Google form to embed right on a page. So you can see at the top, I'm on my home page. And then I have listed here an events page. Okay, so you can embed um, a Google Calendar. And then I have volunteers up here, just kind of some sample um, pages that I have. So sort of a practice, maybe this is the volunteer list for the event which then if I click on the arrow, takes me out to that resource 
from uh, Google Drive. Okay, now some other options I'll show you are where you can have a page and then sub pages that show up underneath that. Okay, so now we'll take a look at an example classic site. Okay, so then this is a site that I had um, created um, for Google for um, social studies inquiries. So you can see at the top here, this is within my Lancaster Central School domain. So initially when I created it, I made it just locked down to those Lancaster users. So you can see already what looks a little bit different is I have pages in a left-hand navigation. Now you can uh, choose a template for this in the new sites now as well. Just the look and feel is a little bit different. Some of the templates are different. This one is your basic note page. And one thing that you have in the classic sites is you can see that I've embedded some Edpuzzle videos, which I can view here. Hello, this is Mary. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google Drawings to create infographics. Um, but this is really a continuation of what we did with the Google Forms. OK, so that's just a little uh, plug for my future uh, webinar. Uh, we'll be talking about some of those uh, same strategies. But uh, the Edpuzzle video embeds is an example of one of those HTML widgets that you can put in the classic sites that isn't exactly there in the new sites yet. But in the new sites, uh, you are able to embed a page. So again, if it's a web page that has a video on it, you are able to embed that actual page uh, within your Google site. And so we'll just look at a few other examples here. So I've linked in this presentation, which you will have uh, access to, some teacher sample sites. OK, so you can see that this one actually is an example where you have the left-hand navigation in a new Google site. But I kind of like the sort of vibrant and clean feel that you can get very easily from uh, the new Google sites. So you can see this is a Google site about Google sites. So within here, you have some other links to teachers' websites. OK, so as you can see at the top here, I can click on this teacher's menu. She, again, has the navigation across the top. And now when I kind of mouse over student gallery, you can see there are sub pages. So that's what I meant when you are in uh, Google Sites. Um, you can create what's called a sub page. So within here, there are some other examples of some websites for teachers of all levels. And you can see the resources they brought in. And again, it's really as simple as then if you have it in your drive already, you can drag and drop it into your site. And then there are some other examples here from Eric Kurtz, just to show you how some of the looks and feels can be different. So this site is actually someone who helps businesses to build Google Sites. So someone maybe with a little more web expertise, but nevertheless, using the new Google Sites for that very clean um, look and feel. And again, another benefit of uh, the new Google Sites that I didn't mention is that it's uh, very mobile friendly. So it's responsive depending on the size of your browser. So you can see that when I have it full screen, I have the links going across for the G Suite website, internets. And then it responds to, let's say, a tablet might have two across. And then if you're on a phone, it would be more like this. So the new Google Sites is, again, more responsive, and it lets you see how it would look on uh, a variety of devices. And just uh, some other links to show you how some looks can be. So these are some examples that would be um, companies that are for profit. So even there are some businesses um, starting to use this um, as an easy way to uh, get content 
up there and out there. And as you can see, you can put in buttons for some social sharing. Okay, and the other link he has here is um, for a church group in the UK. So you can use either some of their pre-done backgrounds or background images, or you can see they've brought in their own image. And in here, you can see that this is an example of how you can have sort of side-by-side -side content of an image, an embedded uh, Google Calendar, and then an embedded Google Map as well. So I can zoom in or out that way, as you can see. And just some other ones for education that I have in here. This one is um, for school districts professional development. They've used um, this as kind of their hub for uh, professional development. So they have the Google Slides embedded, photographs of teachers, which can easily be dragged and dropped in. And then you can see at the top here, they have their menus with um, sub pages under those. And the other link is for um, digital breakouts. Um, so again, embedded YouTube videos of what a breakout Hi, I'm is. I'm Tom Mulaney, digital learning coach at Gravely Hill Middle School. Um, so again, if you haven't um, seen any breakouts or breakout EDUs, I know it's something we offer uh, some workshops at BOCES as well. Or you can take a look at some of the examples that are on the site here. So I can click on the pages at the top, again, to get to some of those templates. Probably you've kind of seen this in my browser before. So again, this is an example of um, a Google Doc that's embedded uh, right into a page. So if you're comfortable with designing things in Google Docs, um, the learning curve is very easy. All you really need to do is keep using your Google Docs and click and drag that into the Google site. And then users can also view that um, as a Google Doc as well. And now the last link that I have in here, um, tips from Alice Keeler. This is more tips for Google Sites, the new Google Sites, not necessarily made with the new Google Sites, because this is actually um, Alice Keeler, who is another um, Google innovator. This is her blog. So it's kind of giving you some of those hidden tips, maybe some things that aren't apparent right away from this very easy um, to use look and feel of the new Google Sites. So she just gives, um, for your future reference, um, some little tips and tricks for this. So for example, ways that if you wanted the same header on each page, you could have that using the double click menu, how you would insert text boxes, and as you've seen in some of the sites, how you can align content vertically um, in columns as opposed to just having it on top of each other. Okay, and then just some other tips for using the new sites including ways that if you wanted to just hide individual pages, you could do that. Um, so again, um, after watching the tutorial videos, um, if you wanted some even additional ideas, um, you can go back to Alice's site. Um, she, like Eric, has uh, some great ideas. Their innovators are always uh, finding those new things. Within the course uh, module, I will post um, a discussion where you can go back and ask your questions. So from here, where I have the webinar slides linked, um, I will also have a discussion area where you can ask questions um, for after the fact. So I would encourage you to uh, go back to that if you have questions, I can answer those in text format. Um, my voice maybe not being the best as it could be right now, but hopefully watching the tutorial videos will give you some great ideas for how to use Google Sites, give you what you need to get started, and then feel free to um, 
ask me questions um, through the course um, discussion at any time. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the webinar. The secret code is publishing. Hello, this is Mary, and I'd like to show you how you can use the new Google Sites for informed action. Now, the traditional Google Sites uh, is very powerful. However, for a, especially a younger user, somebody who's not experienced at making web pages, it can be really uh, a lot to handle. But uh, the new Google Sites was designed so that um, anyone uh, can use Google Sites with drag and drop capability if they have a Google account. So the example I'm going to show today is uh, using the sixth grade inquiry about the Olympics. So one of the suggested informed actions is to uh, create maybe a community-wide Olympics type event to create awareness about what the Olympics were and to create that sense of community. So now this is just an example Google Sites in the new version that I put together. Uh, you can easily put in some text blocks, use uh, some pictures from online, add links, as you can see here, embed videos, embed presentations, you can embed surveys or quizzes that you can take right from here. And also, um, I embedded that um, infographic example that I had used before. So all of these are things that are either from uh, YouTube that I've created or things that are within my Google Drive already that I just could drag and drop into this site. And so, for example, with the infographic, I can click out to see the full version of that and then close out and be back to the site. And this is something that you can then publish and make available to uh, the general public, uh, to the community. So for each site you create, you're going to get its own unique web address through Google Sites. So to get started, I'm going to go to sites.google.com. Okay, now I have some sites that I had created through the old Google Sites, so it takes me there first. But what I want to do is click here where it says New Google Sites. And if you're getting started for the first time, the new Google Sites might be the default option. So I'm going to click New Google Sites. So once I'm in the new Google Sites, to create a new site, I'm going to click on the plus in the red circle uh, here in the lower right corner. So now what I need to do is enter a site name and a page title. So I'm going to call this Cherry Street Community Olympics. And I'll give it the same first page title. You can create more pages. Okay. And then notice once I give the site a title, it changes that up here so that when I go back to Google Sites, that title will reflect as well. So the first thing on the first page, if I want to change the image, it's going to kind of mouse over and click on this drop down next to change image. So now I can either upload one, let's say if I had a picture I had taken, or I can click on select image. And now I can either choose one of their presets that they give you for a, a web banner. If I have an exact image URL from online, I could put that in, or I can click search and I can search Google. So let me search for Olympics 
And let's see, maybe I want to use this Olympic image here. Now, um, these are all labeled for commercial reuse with modification. Um, so what's nice is you know that um, these are already filtered by ones that you can use for a website. As you can see here, it says the address is publicdomainpictures.net. So I'm going to put a check mark next to it and click select. Okay. And so then I have my background. And what it's going to do is adjust for um, readability so that for uh, most users and most screens, it still should be able to be um, read fairly well. So once I have my banner set, I can start to add some content. So you can do that over here on the right hand side under the insert tab. So right now I'm inserting content just on this home page. So I'm going to enter first a text box and it shows up here. So you'll see that I have a few options here to add in uh, some text. Not a lot as far as uh, font goes, but I can put in bold or italicized text. I can choose if I want that to be centered text. And I can do some basic things like add in a numbered list, bullets, or I can add in a link to another website. So I'm going to say, thank you for your interest in our community Olympics. I can say, please view the information below and take the participation survey. Okay. So there's my text block. So now what I'm going to do is to put in some other content. So some examples that you have, if you wanted to embed under the Google Embeds um, a YouTube video, you could do that. So I'll click YouTube. Now I could search for a video or I could um, put in one that I've already uploaded. Um, so for example, the scale databases in Google for social studies inquiry video that I uploaded to YouTube, I could put that in. In this case, uh, for the YouTube video that I'm going to embed, I'm going to do a, a video search. And the one I want to look for is all about the Olympics for kids. Okay. And so if I wanted to preview that, if I didn't already know the exact one I wanted to and I was just doing a search, I could click on this play button to preview the video. Okay. So now with this video selected, I'm going to see a blue select button down in uh, the lower left corner of this frame. So I'm going to click to select that. And then it puts the video into the page so that viewers can either view it right there or they can choose to view it in a new tab full screen. Now, if I wanted to center that, what I would have to do is click down in the center of it and I can drag. Um, so the way that the new Google Sites is developed is with what's called um, a 12 column layout. So I'm clicking and dragging it into a certain number of columns back and forth. If I wanted to make that bigger, I could click in the center and then from one of my corner handles, click and drag it out. Or I could keep it the size that it was and then if somebody wanted to view it full screen, they could do that as well. If I decide later that I don't want this, all I have to do is mouse over this general area and then over on 
the left hand side of the page, I have a trash can to delete it. So if I didn't want that, then I could delete. If I click on that color palette, I can choose a different background. So I could choose an image background if I wanted to, or I could choose one of these presets. Um, some other Google embeds, you could embed either a calendar or a map. So if you had a calendar in your Google Calendar, you could embed that here. Or if you had maps, let's say of locations, that you had saved into your maps, you could embed those as well. Some other options that you have, you can embed things right from your Google Drive. You could even embed an entire Google Drive folder. Uh, the caveat is if it's something that you want everyone to be able to see without logging in, you would have to make sure you change those um, sharing permissions in the Google Drive. Um, so for example, uh, with my infographic here, when I click share in the upper right corner, I want to get a shareable link. Not that I would need to um, get that link right now, but now it says anyone at Erie One BOCES with the link can view. So if I want others in the community who aren't um, part of the school to view, I would have to click on more and then make sure it said anyone with the link and then click save. Just to make sure that others would have that access so that they didn't have to have a school login. Although if it is something where you want students to have to log in to see, you could certainly keep that setting to just users um, from your district. So now back to my site, I'm going to go back to insert on the right, click from drive. And now I'm going to click on my infographic and then in the lower right corner, click insert. And that's going to put that in as well. Okay. Now the last section of my insert menu is Google Docs. Um, so let's say that I had a slides presentation that I wanted to display. It was a Google Slides that students had worked on as uh, a project, and now they want to display that on the web page. So I'm going to click Slides, and it's going to bring up any of the Google Slides that I have. So in this case, I'm going to choose my Ancient Olympics Slides, click on it, and then in the lower right corner, click Insert. Okay. Okay, so now it's a Google Slides that users can go through. And once we publish, we'll take a look at what that would look like to another user. And one last thing I'll put in is a form that I created. So this then would be a participation form. So saying, would you be interested in these events and uh, some other information, or would you be interested in volunteering? So this is something then that um, students or teachers could create and gather information from the community. So I'm going to select that survey, that form, and click insert. And then that would be something that users could fill out right from here. Okay, so now what I would have to do so that others could see this is at the top, click on the publish button. You would have to give your site a name. So it's going to be uh, an address at your domain. And I'll just put in CS Olympics. Now, who can visit your site? If you want users to have to log in with a district login, you can keep the default option anyone at. Um, for me, it's e1b.org. For you, it would be your district. If you wanted it open to others, say in this example, others in the community, 
you would click anyone on the web. And once you have in your site address and you choose your setting, click publish. Now, every time you make changes to uh, the web page, you will have to click publish again at the top of your screen. So now what I'm going to do is click this drop down triangle next to it and click view published site to see what that would look like to other users. So you can see here I have the video, which I can either view here or I can choose to view full screen. I have my infographic that I can either view here or click on this little arrow in the upper right corner to see that full screen. And then once I close out, I'm back here. I can scroll through my Google Slides. And if that I want to watch full screen, click on this icon with the four diagonal arrows. And then as it says, press escape to get back to the small screen in the site. And then here is where now I can fill out the form and then click submit when I'm done. And of course the form, if I kind of mouse over, I could also click in this arrow in the upper right corner to see the form full screen. So if this is a site that you're working on with someone else, so let's say you have students working on it together, you can add them in as editors or students can add each other in as an editor. And so next to publish, you'll see a little person icon with a plus similar to what you would see in any Google Docs. So to add editors, I'm going to click there. And then you can share this link with collaborators. But you would have to actually type in individual names here. Or where it says private, only you can edit, click change. And you can give access um, to anyone within your district. I would say in most cases, probably what you'd want to do is um, you can keep this private, but then invite specific people that you would also like to edit so that you have two different levels of access. You have editors and then general viewers of the site itself. And of course, anytime um, someone makes a change, they would click publish up here at the top of the page where you're editing. Now it saves automatically, but again, for the end user to see it, you would have to click publish. So some other options that you have in your menu on the right hand side, if I want to add more pages, I can click here and I can add a page by clicking on the plus by that sheet of paper. And so let's say I wanted to create a page for events, and then click Done. Okay, and then what it does is, in the navigation, you're going to have now your home, and then next to it, Events. So now when I click Publish, and I click on Preview to preview the new site, you can see that now in the upper right corner, I have two pages, home and events. Now here near uh, the lower right, I can preview it either as something you would view on a desktop, on a medium screen such as a tablet, or I can also click on this phone icon to see what that would look like on somebody's phone. And once I'm done previewing, I can click 
the X here near the lower right. And then I'm back to editing my site. So whenever I want to change the order or move pages around, let's say I create a new page called Volunteers. If I want to change the order of pages, I can click and drag them. If I click on top of something, it becomes a sub page. So then that becomes a drop down. Or I can just click and drag one above another page, drag and drop to change the order. And the same goes for any of my pieces of content here. So if I kind of mouse over my uh, presentation, my Google Slides, I can click and drag it to drag it above something else or below something else. And then I can change the order of items on my page. The other option I have over here on the right is I can choose some different themes. Now notice um, that I have this background that I like. Um, if I wanted to, I could change it to any of these. And then it changes kind of the font and the style of your site itself. So again, um, you would find one that you like as far as the themes go. Whatever you think might work for you and then make sure you publish. So then those changes will also be reflected for your users. And again, when I click on this drop down and click view published sites, the address that's at the top of the page, this is what you would share then with people you wanted to see your, uh, your website. So again, you could either distribute this address or if you wanted to get a shortened URL, you could use the Google URL shortener extension for Chrome that we talked about in earlier modules. So then you would get a shortened address and also a QR code that you could then, let's say, put onto a poster for um, advertising the event. Thank you very much.